150 years ago, across the rapidly growing colony of Queensland, the state's fledgling legal profession was facing serious issues. Money started to come in, so all of a sudden there was more work for a legal profession to do, but perhaps more opportunity for the less experienced not to practice as well as perhaps they should. And so therefore it was important to have an organisation that could reassure the public that in fact the great majority of people who practised law were competent and honourable. To ensure the integrity and good conduct of lawyers, the first Queensland Law Society was formed on the 7th of August 1873 at the Supreme Court in Brisbane. They had all the will in the world and all the good ideas in the world, but in fact no ability to force any of those views. To gain the authority needed to effectively regulate the profession, President R.J. McNabb led the society to the passing of the Queensland Law Society Incorporation Act 1927. In 1931, it introduced the Fidelity Guarantee Fund to protect clients of defaulting solicitors. It was also the profession's way of saying, we want to make this right and reimburse people. It was the profession that took the proposal to the government not the government telling the profession it must do this. During the war years, QLS promoted solicitors preparing soldiers' wills and power of attorney free of charge and implemented legal aid schemes for servicemen and women and their dependents. This was an important way of demonstrating that a concept of professionalism, which is you do something a bit more for the community. Later on, that became very clear in establishing the community legal services. Those sorts of initiatives, I think, have been extremely important. In 1954, the work of the society continued to grow in the post-war era, which necessitated the appointment of the society's first full-time employee, Beryl Donkin, the first woman to hold the position of secretary in a legal society anywhere in the British Commonwealth. I think her greatest achievement in the 40 odd years that she was involved is the fact she was able to do the amount she did with very little really administrative support. Her contribution has been commemorated with the naming of the Beryl Donkin Room in Law Society House. The years following the implementation of the Queensland Law Society Act in 1952 proved significant in terms of the society's expansion and impact, particularly when it came to education. In 1960, to help lawyers stay up to date with developments in the law, Alexander Christie Freeligas helped create the first annual seminars, later renamed the QLS Symposium in 1964. The 1960s saw the development of postgraduate seminars which evolved into formal lectures known as Continuing Legal Education by 1977. In 1988, CLE made Queensland and possibly Australian history with a live telecast. That same year, QLS launched its practice management course, equipping intending principal practitioners with the skills to operate their businesses. And in 1995, the Specialist Accreditation Scheme was established. I think the idea that the society now looks to the welfare of the practising profession is very important. For the last 150 years, QLS has been a voice for the profession through its advocacy for good law, good lawyers and public good. In the 1950s, QLS worked with several jurisdictions to modernise the Companies Act and in the 80s and 90s made its voice heard on controversial issues including the Pregnancy Termination Bill, the Police Complaints Tribunal and Independent Solicitors Certificates. Sometimes it might seem that the professions had the ear of government. Other times it might seem that the profession is not at all heard. The arrival of the COVID pandemic also proved pivotal, with the Health and Disability Law Committee and Litigation Rules Committee driving regulatory change. QLS began its cultural journey with the establishment 
of the inaugural Reconciliation Action Plan Working Group in 2016. Its cultural outreach strategy, 2020 to 25, sets out its vision and key goals to support and advance First Nations solicitors and community. In 2023, the Society also commemorated 20 years of LawLink, providing Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students with an insight into the work of solicitors. From 1971, the Society published its own quarterly, the Queensland Law Society Journal, and in 1981, then-President Rob Hill decided it was time for a fresh take on informing members, resulting in the first edition of Proctor in 1982. I think it brought out the fact that you could have a journal that had very serious, important content, but also had things that were perhaps less serious. Proctor evolved from print to a digital publication in May 2020. Ethics has always been at the heart of the Society's work. In 2010, the Centre for Lawyers Ethics was established. In 2011, QLS Principal Ethics and Practice Council Stafford Shepherd was appointed, which today trades as the QLS Ethics and Practice Centre. Since its earliest days, QLS has played a central role in bringing the profession together. The Society continues to engage the profession across the state through a diverse array of events, membership, committees and publications, and at our annual Excellence in Law Awards Gala. Members are also honoured for achieving 25 and 50 year milestones. Today, QLS shares the same forward-looking perspective of those founding solicitors who gathered to form the Society 150 years ago, and in 2021, the Future Leaders Committee was established, focusing on education, networking, connection and belonging for our early career lawyer cohort. The first home of the Queensland Law Society originated from very humble beginnings, on a single desk inside a small suite of offices occupied by the firm Henderson and Leahy in the old T&G building at 135 Queen Street. In 1981, the Society moved to 96 Albert Street. However, as the legal profession boomed, the Society was once again forced to find a new home, resulting in the building of 179 Ann Street in 1986. Law Society House was officially opened on the 17th of December, 1987. The move to 179 Ann Street meant a great deal, not just for the staff of the society, but also for the profession, because there was a firm hub, there was an absolute base from which the society could operate. That original vision underpinned the council's resolution in 2022 to approve the refurbishment of Law Society House, creating a hub for the profession to foster collegiality through increased capacity for meetings and conferences, mediation and arbitration facilities, social event spaces, and short-term office space for members. Our sesquicentennial is a time for the QLS and us as a profession to pause and reflect on how far we have come and to celebrate those who have served and contributed to our proud history and to the development of good law, good lawyers, and public good. <laughs>